October 3, 2025. In a solar system already reeling from Oumuamua and Borisov, 3E slash Atlas, only the third confirmed interstellar object ever seen, cuts past Mars within 29 million kilometers. For six critical hours, every Mars orbiter races to seize what Earth's telescopes can't. Evidence of anomalies so profound they defy cometary science. A forward-facing jet, a nickel-rich plume, light curve pulses repeating like a clockwork signal, each clue pushing scientists further from an ordinary explanation. What if 3 i slash Atlas's secrets aren't just strange but transformative? In 3 i slash Atlas showing new anomalies after it passed Mars, the window to capture the unthinkable is closing, and what waits on the other side could rewrite our place in the cosmos. Six hours. That's the length of the window before 3 i slash Atlas slips behind the sun and Earth's view goes dark. Mars, for this brief interval, becomes the only outpost with a clear line of sight. The geometry is unforgiving. On October 3, 2025, the interstellar visitor passes within 29 million kilometers of the red planet. But from Earth's perspective, the sun blots out everything. No ground-based telescope can compete. Only the orbiter circling Mars, MRO, Mars Express, ExoMars TGO, hold the keys to the science that might settle decades of debate. Inside mission control, clocks run in tandem with orbital mechanics. The approach is relentless, the schedule exact. Every spacecraft must synchronize its instruments, adjust pointing, and lock onto the predicted path. There is no time for error. Each minute lost means data lost, possibly forever. The high-rise camera on Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter is tasked with imaging at nearly 30 kilometers per pixel a technical stretch that pushes both hardware and human operators to their limits. Mars Express and ExoMars TGO, too, have carved out observation slots, each precious enough to spark negotiation among science teams months in advance. This is not a routine comet flyby. The stakes are clear in every mission update, every email stamped. Urgent! Only Mars can see 3 i slash Atlas now. The object's hyperbolic path guarantees it will never return closest approach to Mars is a cosmic coincidence, an alignment that will not repeat in our lifetimes. For these six hours, planetary science holds its breath. Telecommunications planners warn of the sun's interference, calculating signal-to-noise ratios against the relentless background of solar radio. Engineers rehearse data downlink procedures, anticipating every possible glitch. If a solar flare erupts, if a relay goes out, if a command sequence slips by even seconds, the world's only chance at unfiltered data could vanish. The window is absolute. At 0 hundred hours, UTSC, the first instrument sequence begins. By 0 600 hours, UTC, the comet has moved beyond Mars's reach and the Sun claims the rest. There will be no second attempt. The six-hour passage is both a privilege and a burden a race against time, against geometry, against the limits of human and robotic coordination. What happens during this window will become the foundation for every theory, every argument, every headline that follows. The universe rarely offers such a clean experiment. For one rotation of Mars, the cosmos waits. Inside the Red Watch Enclave, the tempo is set by contingency. These are the operators who memorize every failure mode, who rehearse the loss of signal and the scramble for backup telemetry as if it were routine. Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, the workhorse, is first in line. Its high-rise camera reprogrammed to track a target 30 million kilometers out at a resolution no one expected to attempt. The plan, two imaging runs, each slotted for a window barely wide enough to catch the nucleus in frame. 30 kilometers per pixel is the technical ceiling. Any finer and the laws of optics win. High-rise's tasking isn't a solitary affair. Every sequence is cross-checked by mission engineers and science leads with last-minute uplinks transmitted through the deep space network. The aim is simple, catch 3i slash Atlas on approach, then again as it recedes, and hope for at least one clean image. Calibration routines run in parallel using star fields to lock orientation, while attitude control teams flag any jitter that could blur the shot. 
the hardware is capable, but the margin is razor thin. Mars Express, orbiting on a complementary track, loads its HRSC and Omega spectrometer for a series of passes. Each orbit brings a new vantage, with exposure times bracketed for both the comet's nucleus and its faint, newly forming tail. The SPY-KM ultraviolet spectrometer is set for volatile hunting, its detector primed for any trace of carbon dioxide, water, or the nickel-rich gases flagged in pre-encounter planning. On the ground, teams in Darmstadt and Pasadena coordinate in real time, patching in updates from the latest ephemeris and adjusting pointing as the comet's predicted path shifts by fractions of a degree. ExoMars TGO, the most agile of the trio, assigns its nomad instrument to chemical reconnaissance. Six observation slots, each one negotiated months in advance, are distributed across the window, with flexibility for emergency retargeting if a flare or fragmentation event is detected. CAS-IS, TGO's imager, is programmed for stereo pairs, aiming to resolve the coma's structure and any evidence of jets or outbursts. Data pipelines are primed for rapid downlink, flagged for priority reduction on arrival. Surface assets are not idle. Perseverance's MassCam Z and SuperCam are scheduled for skyward imaging and rapid spectra, with the hope of catching indirect signs, unusual dust, atmospheric perturbations, or auroral activity. Curiosity stands by, though a regional dust storm threatens visibility at its site. Every asset is assigned a role, every contingency is rehearsed. If a solar flare scrambles the signal, Mars Express can switch to backup antennas. If a command sequence fails, the next orbiter in line takes over. The observation campaign runs from October 1st through the 7th, but the focus is absolute during those six hours when Mars alone holds the view. In the control rooms, operators track telemetry, instrument health, and data flow with the precision of a launch countdown. Each reading is time-stamped, duplicated, and logged. The protocol is explicit. No single anomaly, no unconfirmed detection, will stand alone. Every instrument's data must be corroborated by another. The chain of custody for each image and spectrum is as rigorous as any forensic investigation. For this campaign, the boundary between routine and risk is measured in seconds and megabytes. The Red Watch crew knows failure is not an option. Not when the universe delivers a visitor who will never pass this way again. A body more than five kilometers across, larger than any interstellar visitor on record, slides past Mars. The diameter alone shatters expectations. Most comets from beyond the solar system are lightweight, fragile, easy to miss. 3i slash Atlas, by contrast, registers on every instrument as a bulk mass. 33 billion tons, its silhouette stubborn against the Martian sky. Early images from HiRISE and Mars Express confirm a nucleus too large to be explained by the usual models of interstellar debris. The shape is irregular, yet the surface brightness remains oddly uniform, lacking the mottled patches that mark most comets. The first hints of trouble come from the light itself. Photometry teams, running parallel sequences on Mars Express and ExoMars TGO, notice a pattern in the scattered light. Extreme negative polarization a signature never seen in solar system comets. Instead of brightening at certain angles, the comet dims, as if its surface is engineered to absorb and scatter light in ways that defy familiar physics. The polarization profile, mapped across the coma, suggests a crust or coating with properties no one can match to known minerals or ices. Attention turns to the jet. Hubble's last clear images before solar conjunction reveal a forward jet material streaming directly toward the sun, not away. On Mars Express, the Omega spectrometer searches for volatile signatures in the jet's wake, but the geometry is awkward. The jet's alignment with the solar vector is so precise that mission scientists debate whether it reflects a natural outgassing mechanism or some deeper, unexplained process. The tail, faint and barely detectable, appears only in late August, lagging weeks behind the jet's first appearance. No textbook predicts this sequence. In Pune, India, a citizen astronomer, Priya Raalo, picks up a repeating fluctuation in the comet's light curve. Her backyard telescope, running automated exposures, records a pulse, 
brightening and fading at intervals that seemed too regular for random activity. She posts the data to an online forum, drawing the attention of professional teams. While Mars-based photometry is limited by the sun's glare, the pulses persist in Ra'alo's time series, prompting a scramble to cross-check with orbital assets. The cadence of the pulses, sharp onset, clean decay, every cycle measured in minutes, defies easy explanation. No known comet, interstellar or local, pulses like this. Each anomaly compounds the next. Size, jet direction, polarization, and light curve pulses. None fit the standard playbook. The data, timestamped and duplicated across multiple missions, begin to sketch a portrait of an object that resists every simple category. The need for alternative hypotheses grows urgent. Chemistry and trajectory may offer clues, but for now, the evidence is visible in every frame. 3 i atlas does not behave like any comet known to science. Spectroscopists cue the first spectra as 3 i atlas clears Mars's limb. The signal is unmistakable, a plume dominated by carbon dioxide, but with nickel lines outshining iron by a factor of four. No solar system comet has ever delivered such a ratio. Omega's data cubes, stacked across the encounter window, confirm the trend. Nickel, not iron, defines the metallic fingerprint. The plume's emerald glow peaks at 516 nanometers, a wavelength usually reserved for auroral displays, not cometary chemistry. Each instrument, from Mars Express's Omega to TGO's Nomad, returns the same verdict. The numbers hold. Carbon dioxide outweighs water by more than 8 to 1. Standard comet models, built on water ice and dust, collapse under this chemistry. Astrodynamicists, meanwhile, map the path in real time. The trajectory slices through the solar system at an angle just 5 degrees off the ecliptic, far too flat for a random interstellar arrival. Simulations run overnight show the odds, less than 1 in 500 for such a planar entry. The alignment tightens further. After Mars, the outbound track passes within 9 degrees of the WOW signal's historic direction, a coincidence with a probability under 1%. Each variable, from the ecliptic angle to the timing of the Mars flyby, reads like a statistical outlier. Data teams debate the implications as spectra stream in. The nickel-rich chemistry, the carbon dioxide dominance, the improbable path. No single anomaly stands alone but together they sketch a puzzle that resists natural explanation. Some point to deep freeze chemistry, others to cosmic coincidence. The numbers, though, refuse to cooperate. Patented alloys on Earth echo the nickel to iron ratios, but no direct match is found in the open databases. Forensic comparisons stall at the limits of public reference spectra. The plume's composition sits at the edge of what is known and what might be engineered institutional boundaries begin to show. NASA teams urge caution, cataloging every possible natural mechanism. ESA analysts cross-check calibration routines, wary of instrumental bias. The Galileo Project's theorists publish preprints hinting at techno-signatures, drawing sharp rebukes from planetary scientists. The chemistry and the path are now the battleground. Each new data release is scrutinized for error, for artifact, for any loophole that might restore the comet to the realm of the familiar. Yet, as the anomaly dossier grows, the questions multiply. The evidence chain is complete, but the verdict remains elusive. 18 minutes. That's the length of the blackout that nearly erased the most valuable data set of the entire encounter. At 0418 UTC, as Mars Express swept through its closest approach sequence, a solar flare hammered the relay, knocking out the main high-gain antenna mid-transmission. Engineers in Darmstadt scrambled, rerouting the downlink to the backup low-gain array, a last-ditch move that halved the bandwidth and forced a triage of files. Only a single, high-resolution spectrum, capturing the nickel-rich plume, made it through unscathed. The rest, including early imaging of the coma's cyan fringe, was flagged for delayed retransmission and risked permanent corruption if another flare struck. Inside mission control, tension cut through the air. The Red Watch crew, trained for worst-case scenarios, ran decision ladders in real time. Every second counted. Telemetry buffers filled then overflowed. The choice? 
prioritize the spectral cube or risk losing everything in the queue. The decision was unanimous, save the spectrum. When the signal finally locked, a round of muted relief swept the consoles. The world would see the nickel lines, but the price was steep. Gaps in the visual record, lost context for the chemistry that now drove debate. The blackout's aftermath exposed deeper fault lines. Rumors surfaced of withheld images and partial data releases, fueling demands for transparency. Avi Loeb, already a vocal advocate for open science, pressed for immediate public access, arguing that the stakes extended beyond individual careers or agencies. Within hours, Freedom of Information Act requests landed on NASA and ESA servers. The question was no longer just scientific. It was forensic, political, and public. For 3i slash Atlas, the battle over the data had only begun. October 29th looms on every mission calendar. Perihelion, the moment 3i slash Atlas, will graze closest to the sun. For planetary defense modelers, this is the stress test. Their simulations run in parallel with the science, tracking every possible trajectory nudge, every scenario where a non-gravitational force might shift the outbound path. Economic risk memos circulate behind closed doors, warning that even a hint of trajectory change could ripple through markets if not quickly explained. The object's mass, 33 billion tons, commands attention far beyond astronomy circles. Forensic teams revisit the nickel-rich signature, chasing echoes in industrial archives. Patent filings from 2018 to 2022 detail nickel alloys used in heat shields and mining drills, but the spectral fingerprints refuse a perfect match. The resemblance is suggestive, not conclusive, and no corporate disclosure or FOIA release bridges the gap. The evidence remains forensic, not forensic grade. Meanwhile, the European Space Agency's JUICE mission prepares for its own encounter. In November, as 3i slash Atlas sweeps past perihelion, JUICE will have the best vantage in the solar system. Its spectrometers and cameras, designed for Jupiter's moons, are retasked to capture the interstellar visitor. Policy analysts and planetary scientists coordinate observation slots, each aware that this window may yield the most decisive data yet. Every possible anomaly, fragmentation, outburst, or a sudden course correction becomes a watch point. By December, 3 Dunai slash Atlas will re-emerge from behind the sun, visible once again to Earth-based telescopes. The calendar is already crowded with scheduled campaigns, each aiming to resolve the questions left open by the Mars flyby. Until then, the world waits for the next data gate, each milestone a new threshold in the search for answers. On October 3, 2025, 3. I Atlas became the third confirmed interstellar object to pass through our solar system, coming within 29 million kilometers of Mars. Mars-based observatories recorded seven distinct anomalies, a diameter over five kilometers, a forward jet, extreme negative polarization, repeating light curve pulses, a nickel-rich and carbon dioxide-dominated plume, and a trajectory with only a 1 in 10,000 probability of occurring by chance. Despite capturing a single critical spectrum during an 18-minute data blackout, several images and data remain classified or withheld. To date, no published source has resolved the origin of the nickel-to-iron ratio or explained the repeating pulses. With perihelion due on October 29th and the JUICE mission preparing for further observations in November, the scientific community continues to watch closely. The precise nature of 3 slash Atlas remains unknown, but its anomalies challenge current models and keep open the question of what else might enter from beyond our solar system.